Welcome to the Linguava podcast, The Invisible Profession, where we give you tools, tips, and resources in medical interpretation and translation that help bring to life our industry and ultimately help improve health outcomes for the limited English proficient communities. Today, I am super excited getting the chance to interview Svetlana Ruth, a Russian interpreter who grew up in Russia, got her master's in English and German languages, and she's also interpreted at the World Council and also in the Peace Corps in Latvia. She's had a wide array of of interpreting experiences from, from medical to domestic violence, academic, and She is not only a certified Russian interpreter, but she's also a licensed interpreter trainer, be able to provide healthcare interpreter training for the 60 hour training course. And today I wanna dive deep with her on interpreter advocacy. When does an interpreter step outside of their role and become an advocate? And when should they not do that? She's got some great experience and examples on different scenarios on when an interpreter should do that and how to know how to respond based on the the code of ethics. So super excited to be able to ask her some questions. Great person, amazing interpreter and a dear friend. So really, really excited to be chatting with you today. And what I'm wanting to talk to you about specifically is professionalism and how to know what role to stay in as an interpreter. One of the the great classes that I saw you teach was an ethics class at uh, the OHCIA OHCIA conference. OHCIA conference, yes. And you had all of these amazing scenarios that everyone was like, wow, how did you even come up with those those scenarios? Because as interpreters, we're constantly given unique scenarios where we have to decide, what do I do in this situation? How do I handle this situation? So I I want to tackle one that I think is going to be really interesting for, for everyone. Well, Please. first of all, thank you for the introduction to kind of you to praise me so, but I appreciate it. Um, the scenarios that I use during the workshops or classes, most of them come from interpreters. I reach out to interpreters who already work in the field and ask, mm-hmm. what would you like to discuss with your colleagues? What had been bothering you and you couldn't quite decide or resolve any particular yeah. story? And they send yeah. them to me. So Mm -hmm. I collect those. They're not made up stories. They are true situations that our interpreters had faced in the field. The one specific one you're referring to is Mm -hmm. a 15 year old patient, a female patient comes uh, with the severe pain in the lower abdomen. She is with her mother and the doctor sends them to do an x-ray. The technician at the x-ray lab asks lots of questions, including a standard one, Mm -hmm. is there any chance you might be pregnant? The interpreter interprets the questions and realizes two weeks ago, this young Mm -hmm. lady, girl, was at the doctor's appointment with the gynecologist confirming that she is pregnant at the time. Mm -hmm. So, dilemma, what does the interpreter do? Do we need to inform someone about it? Is it uh, our place to speak up or not? Is there advocacy that shall take place? Shall interpreter stay out of it? This is not the one and only time that situation happened. Mm -hmm. There were at least three different interpreters who had very similar stories. So we brought it for a discussion at the workshop. And there are many opinions Mm -hmm. i would say just like every interpreter is a different human being we all operate within the same ethical principle always base our decisions on the rules that exist in our profession but we're dealing with humans and we're humans and there are very different possibilities to deal with the same situation so Mm -hmm. that's the one and so in that scenario and it's such a Interesting, unique scenario as a as an interpreter myself. I, I never quite had one just like that. <laughs> lots of lots of others. The but time might come. You but but the know. question that I have to ask you though is: so what would you do, or what would you recommend that the interpreter do 
in that situation, they were there two, two weeks prior. They know that the patient at that point was pregnant. Are they still? Are they going to be giving that baby up? That's their choice. All those things. So what would you do in that situation? Before saying what I will do, perhaps I shall offer a couple of ideas that mm-hmm. other interpreters had. Okay. And they thought this would be the best practice. One interpreter was very strongly advocating or choosing advocacy. We shall say something. The interpreter shall say something. Because if this young lady is pregnant, the x-ray procedure could compromise the pregnancy or the health of this newborn, unborn child. True, but we don't know whether as of today this young lady is still pregnant if she is keeping the pregnancy, if she's planning to terminate the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So perhaps it's not a health concern today. It was two weeks ago, maybe not today. Interpreters are not mind readers. We shall not assume anything, even though Mm -hmm. we had heard something earlier. It doesn't mean the facts are still the same. Exactly, yeah. We operate within... Today, this encounter, this conversation, and within this conversation, there was nothing to indicate that this woman is pregnant or young lady. So I would not agree with that interpreter based on that. Mm -hmm. The other interpreter said, well, you know what? Just maybe clarifying the question, maybe leading them to a conversation, maybe saying something like, why are you asking this question? How important is it? Um, (laughs) But then, is that the role of the interpreter? That should be right. the role of the patient or your mother. Ex- exactly. There. Yeah. Perhaps they shall so. ask, why are you asking whether we're pregnant Very intimate or not? question. Why yeah. is it so important? Mm-hmm. And the technician will offer that information. Exactly. Yeah. Not the interpreter. So after con- con- several conversations on this subject, my approach would be stay within the interpreter's role Interpret accurately everything impartially, not put in any different tone of voice, not frowning my eyebrows mm-hmm. or yeah. looking surprised or yeah. concerned. Interpret professionally and let it be because it is not up to me to choose right. what to do with this pregnancy, what to do with this child, the 15-year-old patient. There was no imminent threat to anyone known to me. There was um, other things to, there are other things to consider, respect. Respect the patient and the provider, give them an opportunity to answer questions that they have versus not. Yeah, right. (laughs) So I would just interpret. That would be me, Mm -hmm. but I don't, expect that Mm -hmm. everyone would agree with me. Right, well, no, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure not, and that's what makes our industry and our profession so unique with ethical situations, right? It's that not everyone's going to see it the exact same. But sure. but as interpreters, we want to make the decision based on the code of ethics, right? Correct. So that it's, it's bringing us back to why would we make this decision, right? So we're trying to remain remain impartial, give that give that respect. Confidentiality. Confidentiality. We didn't even talk about it. If the interpreter yeah. mentions anything, that will be breaking the confidentiality from a previous mm-hmm. encounter, which yeah. only could be considered in case where there is imminent threat to someone's mm-hmm. health, safety, or dignity. In this case, it's nothing imminent known to the interpreter. The interpreter mm-hmm. assumes right. that maybe this young lady is still pregnant. That's not enough basis for interfering or breaking confidentiality yeah. or inserting right. their concerns into the encounter. And so another, so another question then that, that does come up a lot, and there's a lot of debate around the advocacy role mm-hmm. of an interpreter. <laughs> one of the roles of an interpreter, right, through being a mediator is also being an advocate. Sure. So when do you become an advocate? Obviously, you can't, it should be a very last resort, but how do we help clarify and make it easy, make it simple for a new interpreter that's joining our profession? Okay, this would be when you would become an advocate. If you could maybe give a, an example as to to highlight, to make it, make it more clear. Sure. Yes. 
this question is a hot topic, mm-hmm. not just for new interpreters, also for experienced interpreters. Yeah. Yeah. I think most of the times the challenge is, no matter how long you worked in the fields, because every single encounter is so unique, every individual patient, client, provider is very unique, and the interpreter has to think very quickly and analyze this situation from every aspect of every ethical principle. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I feel that the more we talk about it in advance, the more experience we have discussing these matters, the easier it will be to make a decision on this. During the training, for example, when mm-hmm. I yeah. uh, speak to interpreters who may be already working in the field but want to know more about the profession, we always talk that advocacy is your last resort. You're mediating Mm-hmm. But that's not an important or primary role of interpreting. Correct. Yeah. However, there are situations when interpreting might be needed and critical. Again, as I mm-hmm. said earlier, yeah. if the person's health, safety, or dignity yeah. is at risk, is compromised, and it's imminent, right now, if something is not done, things mm-hmm. could be drastically worse. Right. Here's right. an example. A patient is getting ready for a surgery. In the first portion of the preparation, the nurse had asked the patient, which arm shall I put the blood pressure cuff on? Interpreter interpreted, and the Mm -hmm. patient said, I have an implant in this arm, so we can't put a cuff on this arm. Mm. Um, A little later, about 30 minutes later, the patient had been given some sedative medication, so the patient is not quite coherent. Comes another nurse and says, I need to put the blood pressure cuff on. Now we'll keep it on because we're going into the operating room soon. And the patient is not responding and saying which arm to put the blood pressure cuff on. That will be an appropriate time and place to advocate. So the interpreter will say something like, excuse me, just a few minutes ago, the interpreter had interpreted the conversation with the other nurse regarding the implant in this arm, so the blood pressure cuff shouldn't go on this arm. Could you please verify that with the staff or the client, mm-hmm. the patient? Because the, the patient's exactly. sedated at that time, right? Because right. if they do put it on and the interpreter says nothing, that could completely mess up the implant who will not be working anymore and cause It happened such a damage. short period ago. You know that nothing had changed within that time. It, I had a exactly. situation somewhat... Similar happened when I was in, interpreting where similar situation. I was interpreting earlier in the day at the hospital and they asked, you know, do you have any allergies? And they had an allergy to penicillin. And then later on, they asked the same thing. I think that the, the patient might have just been a little bit overwhelmed or tired. They asked if they had allergies and they said no. And so it was, it was literally maybe two and a half hours. So I know that that allergy didn't disappear. It didn't go exactly, away. It's still there. Yes. So that moment I did you know, step out as an advocate and, Beautifully that's done. For, and that's, that's exactly the time and the place because if, if the interpreter does not advocate, this mm-hmm. patient's health is at risk because right. they might prescribe or give medicine right there and then that right. will cause a severe reaction, allergic reaction. So, yes, these are the sort of times when we say advocacy is appropriate, but right. it's important to do it right. Advocacy doesn't mean, let me tell you this story. Mm-hmm. Advocacy well, means, here's what I think you should me, do. Would yeah. you verify, right. clarify, yeah. please double check. Just point out that there mm-hmm. might be a concern and let the provider and the client work on that step back. So advocacy. Tricky, mm-hmm. important, mm-hmm. doable professionally. Learn how to do it, practice. Yeah. Come to discuss it with your colleagues and you'll be better prepared. <laughs> come come take a training with Svetlana and then you'll yes. you'll fully, fully understand it. We have another workshop coming and yeah. advocacy is part of it. So come oh. and discuss with your colleagues. I think that's a that's a great topic. Well thank you so much, Svetlana, for, for joining us today. Uh, it was a pleasure, pleasure pleasure hearing from you and uh, you always always have the best best stories. If you ever get to <laughs> attend one of her training, it's like a dance meets storytelling meets training all in one it's a really beautiful experience so i hope that we all have a chance to share experience with each other that's what mm-hmm. i try to that's what it's all uh, about incorporate most so come join the team of professionals 
and work together. Excellent. All right. And, and be sure and, and uh, subscribe as well here on our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And you can find our podcast, The Invisible Profession, on anchor.fm slash The Invisible Profession on, on all platforms as well. So check us out there for more videos just like this one. Thank you, Svetlana. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. We would love to hear, hear your feedback as well. What do you think? What is the role of an interpreter? And when would you step out as an advocate? Would you become an advocate in some of the scenarios that Svetlana mentioned? Provide your feedback, whether it's in the, in the podcast comments or YouTube comments. We'd love, love to hear, hear from you. And what other questions do you have? Send us in questions and we'll, we'll put them on here on an upcoming episode as well. If you like this episode, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit like, and share that with your friends. That really helps giving you the best content and uh, provide these kinds of resources for you. So continue to share that with, uh, with your friends and we appreciate all your support.